Brandon Boykin was one of my personal favorite dogs of all time. Fayetteville, right? From Fayetteville, yeah. Yeah, he he uh, punched me on the sideline one time. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just got the cold open, Jim. <laughs> Welcome to My Got a Podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode... John Powell and I are joined by Paul Muchnick to review number one Georgia's 33 to nothing win over Sanford. We also talked to Paul about the time he spent with the Georgia football team in 2009, including that Brandon Boykin story, which, full disclosure, was an accident. As always, remember to check out store.mygotapodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media at mygotapodcast. Finally, we'd love for all of you to come join us at Dog Central. That's D A W G S Central.com. Now, Let's join the conversation in progress. All right. Well, we're we're back. I'm I'm back home from a, a weekend in Athens. I, I did. I was able to make it, like we like we talked about uh, possibly doing. Uh, John, you, you, I know you were you were not able to make it, um, but all, all good. I know at home with Carter, kind of being on the mend, um, and then we we do have a third person with us uh, tonight. So teased i guess or, or d- discussed brought up uh john's friend paul um in the in the preview episode and uh we were texting about it this weekend and you guys were talking we're just like you know what we should we should just have, just have him on, <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> have him on the we, we, we didn't think about it for the preview so let's let's uh let's, let's do it for the review so uh paul why don't you just i guess just quick uh give us a quick introduction yeah, it's hard to uh, hard to match the introduction I got on the preview show. I think from Mr. Powell there, uh, <laughs> as as John mentioned, a good a good old buddy of John, uh, Paul Muchnick, um, happened to have some history with Samford. I'm a Samford grad um, in their sports medicine department. Worked for the football team there, and then uh, went on to uh, medical medical college of Georgia in Augusta, and then did a uh, essentially a residency sports medicine residency for uh, UGA working for Mr. Ron Corson, who is, uh, as you guys probably know, is a mogul, uh, yeah. a, a, uh, a pretty large, big deal, the godfather of sports medicine uh, there in, uh, in Athens. So um, yeah, happy to be a part. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah, no, pre- appreciate you joining. Yeah. I was trying to think, um, I was trying to think off the top of my head how long Ron's been at Georgia. I know he was with the yeah. Olympics in 96. Yeah. Um, so somewhere right around that time, maybe right after that. Okay. Cool. But you, Paul, you you were telling me that you took the the Ron Corson track, right? Yeah. So Ron is a graduate of Samford. Uh, <laughs> that was the other thing. I was listening to your podcast on the preview. I was like, hey, there's other there's other fun facts about this match out here. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, no other podcast dropped that nugget. So you're getting it here with my guy to podcast. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Ron Ron went to. Went and graduated from Samford, went on to actually Medical College of Georgia, did his schooling there. uh, And then, um, as I mentioned, did some work with the Olympics in 96 and uh, landed at uh, UGA and been there ever since. Awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. (laughs) Um, Well, let us bore you for a minute. I want to I want to run through just the quick a quick recap of the game um, or not even so much a recap. We're not going to go play by play or anything, Um, but not not a whole lot to. uh, to gain out of that one. I don't, I don't think <laughs> it dissect. Um, I think John, like something that you had said, actually, I think was what I used for the cold open actually was, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of laughing, joking about like, if Kirby's going to run it up on his old boss, then things have really changed. And I, I think we saw, he was not willing to do that. <laughs> he was definitely not willing to do that. No, not at all. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty much how you, how we expected it to go. Although I feel like that, um, one of the biggest facets of this game, which you texted about, and my dad mentioned, but like they, they they cut the game short. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember. I, I know I've seen a running clock before um, in some of games like this, even in in the smart era. Um, I, I can't even remember what year it was. I think 18, maybe there was one year where there were like multiple games that they did something weird in the second half. Um, I can't remember if any of those had a shortened game or you know a shortened quarter. That was. That was yeah, I was actually wondering if there was some kind of contractual agreement or if it was something in the in the contract of the of the uh, of the game because I've never seen something like that either just where it ended so quickly yeah, yeah. well and it was kind of weird in the stadium because they you know they announced it and like 
but you had to like really be paying attention. And, and, and it was the ref that said it over his mic, um, which, you know, like when they turn it on or whatever, you can kind of catch it or not. And he, I, I think what he said was based on an agreement by the coaches, I, I think is all he said. So I'm, I'm guessing they just talked to him like, Hey, let's get this thing over. <laughs> the gentleman's, the gentleman's of, of gentlemen's agreements. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Hatcher and Kirby smart getting together and saying, Hey, let's pack this baby in. <laughs> right. Exactly. I, I imagine Chris had maybe a couple goals. One was, uh, not to have body bags leaving Athens <laughs> the two is just making sure they got paid that $500,000 on their way out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. That sounds right. Um, hey, before we, before we leave, can we get the check? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What seriously. Hey, I, I'm happy to write that check. Unlike some other, uh, schools this weekend, I, I, I know Nebraska, Notre Dame, uh, who else? Uh, App State, uh, who'd they beat? Um, Oh yeah, and M, right? Yeah, A&M. none of them are happy. Wow, that's a rough, rough check to to write after you got beat. Yeah, so you know, on a weekend where you've got stuff like that going, and and two FCFs, two FCS teams beat uh, FBS teams. So what? It was Holy Cross and in our, and Incarnate Word, uh, they both won. And I know Buffalo was one of oh Buffalo and Nevada. Now who? Which team was playing which? I I can't remember anymore. Uh, but yeah, so it was it was a overall crazy weekend in, in college football. So I, I'll, I can live with a ho-hum 33 to nothing. I, I think we were right in that it was a name your score game. I guess I would say um, we just named the score lower than we had predicted, which is fine. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. It was absolute carnage. It was absolute carnage and to be a top 25 team this past weekend. But um, yeah, I mean, I think one of the biggest surprises that I had was, how long it took Georgia to punch one in. Um, yeah. If we're, you know, splitting hairs over, over UGA's performance, you know, we get down into the, you know, inside the five yard line and we kick two field goals twice in a row. Yeah. Um, after pretty, pretty dominating, you know, performance all, all on the drives. And, you know, I don't know, my dad and I were just looking at each other like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure Thorson, I'm sure Thorson's over on the sideline and our UGA's punter, you know, he's he's like, man, why does Jack Pocket to kick all these balls? Right. <laughs> he he did get to punt more in this game. Uh he, yeah. he still looks good. So I don't know. Yeah, that, that was one of my theories was maybe uh Stetson got upset about the Stetson Bennett doesn't like Australia. And uh, you know, he, he tried to help him out a little bit this week. I I, I think uh I would agree. I would say Stetson looked a little off to me like for he, sure you know now granted he still threw for 300 yards right <laughs> so like, you know no, but, he, but he missed he was missing he was darnell missing. he yeah. missed darnell he missed brock bowers yeah. i think he had one that was a for sure touchdown to lab mcconkey that like he was he was high he was throwing him high all he, all, all, all throughout the beginning stages of the game which was just yeah like and, and then meanwhile us us slowly samford fans were joking on the side after that <laughs> second drive uh, te- I texted my my college roommates saying, "All right, guys, we two two uh, two drives and two field goals. We got them right where we want them. You know, we're, right. in, their, we're in their heads. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that, that's, right definitely, we want that's definitely a win at that point, right? I yeah. mean, you well, know, and then tonight, then tonight, I get a text from my my first college roommate at Sanford, and and he said, "Hey." 33 to nothing against the reigning national champions. And we got $500,000 for it. I feel like we just won the weekend. <laughs> well, you, you, you got go. a point there. That's right. Uh, yeah, seriously. I mean, you guys, you guys were able to stop the, you know, the virtual streak of Stetson's, you know, starting, you know, starting games. I mean, he went seven possessions with seven straight touchdowns versus Oregon. You guys held us to two field goals. Yeah. 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 It was a difference. Um, I, I do think like, I guess as far as like what stood out to me, it was probably the um, the lack of the run blocking for Georgia. Like I think the backs ended up doing okay, uh, but and I have not rewatched it yet. But just being at the stadium, uh, I felt like the running backs didn't have a lot of room to operate. Um, so I, I don't know, like make what of that what you will. Like I think that a lot of people have commented on like the game plan was pretty vanilla. You know, Kirby going to go up against his old boss. Uh, the rotation, a lot of rotation going on. Uh, the offensive line, like early on, like everyone was changed over. I mean, Erickson came in at center very early. Uh, it was like a completely different offensive line. So I don't know. They got a lot of a lot of players' experience. 
Um, so that's always good. And then, you know, I, I, I guess the only thing I'm not sure of, I still haven't heard an official update on, um, on AD Mitchell. Cause I mean, he'd left after what, like the second play of the game or something like that. Uh, it was on the first drive when he kind of, he limped off, uh, with an apparent ankle injury. So yeah, I haven't seen him from the school, but it sounds like he's okay. I don't know. Paul probably could give us a little bit of insight <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Those ankle injuries are sensitive, aren't they? Well, and I imagine in a game like that, I mean, if you even sniff an injury, they're taking you out. I mean, there's right. there's no playing through injuries on that uh, in, in games like this. In fact, I kind of wondered, you know, Kirby's old boss used to call these games rat poison. Um, mm. You know, and I wondered if if what kind what what term has Kirby coin for these trap games you know, what's <laughs> yeah. the internal the internal notes <laughs> yeah um what are some other things jim some some other things that jumped out to you well so I one of the things more. <laughs> okay uh, yeah i got a couple not a ton but one yeah. of the things that we had we had wondered we'd asked was would we see bear alexander and we did so not a ton but he did it he did get into the game um so there was a, a question answered there um I think there, I mean, the, the, just to just to elaborate more on that, like from my per, my my perspective, um, yeah. I mean, we've just got so much depth, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, yeah. he's he's kind of in that. Um, who's a, who's a player? Who's a player on the on the defense this year? I mean, maybe maybe Jalen Carter, like someone that's like just got other guys that are ahead of him that are so much that have so much clout, I guess, for a back lack mm-hmm. of a better description. Yeah. Um, that that's probably going to be par for the course for him. And next year will be his breakout year. Yeah. I mean, Jordan Davis, I mean, people com- like to compare bear Alexander to Jordan Davis. And I mean, you know, he, he didn't, he didn't really start playing significant minutes until pretty late in his freshman year. So I, mm-hmm. I'm not like, you know, I'm not shocked or anything with the depth that we have, but I was, you know, that was somebody that I wanted to see. We did, I we guess did, yeah. I have like nothing really to criticize with the defense. I mean, it was a shutout. Um, <laughs> I, I well, it. to that point, to that point, like, you know, we shut out a team that had put up 530 yards, mm-hmm. 52 points and 416 passing yards on Florida last year. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. we shut out a team that put up those numbers against Florida. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, I was actually thinking about that, you know, uh, when listening to you guys preview, uh, around, um, I can guarantee you Kirby mentioned that or maybe even showed some film of that, of like these guys are, they not may not be uh, FBS, but they're, uh, you know, they're still capable of running up the score on some of these, some of these schools here. Yeah. I, 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 that was the thing that Rick used to always say, right. That like, I don't care about like what level they are. Like they know how to win like that kind of thing, you know, which I think is important. So yeah. The long snapper. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Easy there, Dooley. Easy. <laughs> Um, I guess the only other thing to me, uh, I, I would just go back to the offense, right? Like, and like all the rotation, we saw a lot of substitution. We saw a lot, a lot of receivers. Um, so we saw, we did get to see bell, uh, Dylan bell get in there. He caught his first touchdown pass. That was pretty cool. Uh, saw a lot of Jackson Meeks. So that was good. I think my only kind of, and I think you, I don't know, John, if you had this kind of in your pocket, cause I think we were texting about this a little bit, still a little confused about the usage or lack of usage of Kiaris Jackson. Um, but again, I think we were just cycling through rotating so many guys. I don't really know if there's anything to look into that or not. Um, didn't, didn't John post the snap counts? I hadn't had a chance to even look at his now that we mentioned it. Um, he did. I can tell you. I've actually got it up. Uh, but so this game, yeah, Kiaris only played 14 snaps. Um, so, but it, I, again, hmm. not a lot of the receivers played uh or a lot of them rotated around a lot but like as a comparison i mean dylan bell played 42 snaps I was, I, you just hit the nail on the head that's yeah. the thing that i was just about to point out was that our true freshman played 42 snaps and our senior wide receiver the unofficially official unofficial wide receiver of my god a podcast <laughs> only had 14 yeah so that 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 was surprising to me um it sounds like a recruiting tactic Right. <laughs> you, know, you, can, you can go tell these seniors in high school that, hey, next year you can get 42 snaps. If, yeah, seriously. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I like how you think there. Um, and then I guess the only other thing is just Avery Gilbert, uh, only 10 snaps. Um, so that was a surprise to me, especially in this game. So I think we're well beyond 
car car wreck um, explanations on that one. Yep. Yeah. So who knows? We'll see. I think they were just oh, I don't know if you know, our Eric Gilbert got into a car accident like a, a few weeks ago. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. But so. <laughs> okay. Any any other takeaways for you, John? I mean, I I, like I said, you know, I, I think it was a name your score game. I think we got a lot of uh, quality reps in for the backups, and I don't have a whole so, lot more. To say. It, it's I mentioned it on the last review, and I'm going to mention it again. But our ability to get and gain short yardage on third down is a concern that I have. So we had multiple instances where we were unable to get a significant push. And I'm saying, like, there were certain situations, like I can remember distinctly one where uh, it was, we were probably about the 30, the, the Sanford 30, 30, 30 yard line or so. And it was like a third and one or a third and two. And we needed a first down or, you know, we're try- obviously trying to get a first down. And um, when the ball was snapped, we just had no push. Like we were not moving. We were not moving the, the Sanford defensive lineman downfield like we have been accustomed to in the past. Yeah. So as a, as a trend line, we ended up getting the first down and that's not because a hole opened up. But we weren't really moving people around. And that was pretty consistent from the Oregon game. It was pretty consistent um, throughout the game um, versus Sanford. And it's just like a watch this space kind of thing for me. Yeah. Um, because I would have expected us to get more of a push against a, a team like Sanford. No offense, Paul. I, well, actually, that I just briefly scanned the notes um, tonight. And that was actually something that jumped out to me. I think I, I can't find it now. But I thought I saw it was like five, five for 13. Georgia had on third down conversions, um, which I, f- I found interesting as well, John. Uh, are you talking about the stats from yeah. the, the gym that Jim linked out? Yeah, I was, I can't find it now, but I'm pretty sure I saw it earlier that, that Georgia was like five for 13 on third down conversions. No, you're correct. That is correct. Yep. Isn't that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is that's, pretty low. That's, yeah. that's pretty low for a, for a Samford type team, but. Yeah, I, I also didn't know if in the context of that was that the second or third string that was in at that point either. So I don't know if all of that was on the first string. Yeah, I would say it was a mix. So that that was the thing. Like with – we kept a lot of the first team skill position players in for a while. Um, but although there, though, there still was a rotation, right, because we already said A.D. Mitchell was out. Um, but the offensive line was rotating early and often. Um, like the, the starting five was not in there very long. They came back in, they started like they, but they would put the second team line and then first team back. There was a lot of rotation. Um, so that was interesting, but I, I kind of wondered, like I've heard, I don't know. I know I've heard Graham say that the play calling was pretty vanilla. Um, so that's Mm -hmm. one thing. Um, and the other thing is, I mean, again, like you've got that, like the motivation factor. I've seen us do this before in years past where we're, playing in a game like this and you get super concerned and you're about the offensive line. They're like, where's the push? But then there is one, you know, the next week or whatever against a different opponent. But your point about that, there wasn't really there against Oregon either. That is true. I hadn't even really thought of it that way either. I, Cause I'm, I'm always trying to like talk myself out of being worried about things now, <laughs> but you're right. I mean, we, we didn't. Run run. Test. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, cause we did not run the ball super effectively against Oregon either, but it, that, that I felt like that was the scheme. That's kind of what we were doing here. You would kind of want to be able to see, you know, we've got the third and short or whatever, just line up and hand the ball off and, and get the first down. And we didn't really see that. Yeah, we haven't – obviously, we haven't done the, the preview episodes and things like that. But, like, as we go through the season looking at some of the defensive stats, we'll probably do that. I'll probably do that for the South Carolina re- preview. But, you know, as we look ahead with some of these other teams that we have coming up against, um, you know, as their defensive lines get tougher, as we get deeper into the SEC schedule, um, I'm definitely going to be observing that <laughs> cl- yeah. more closely. Right. Um but yeah, that's that's the, that's that's the other thing that I had. Okay, cool. Well, I I, w- I want to get to some of the some of Paul's stuff. So let me run through two things quickly. One, recap coaches over unders. John crushed me uh, this game. John went five and three with coaches over unders. I went only two and six. John now has a commanding lead on the season, eleven and five. I'm seven and nine. And quick shout out, I did see Coach Trillbill at the game. We were able to sync up and have a have a nice 
talk and John, by the way, he, he confirmed that if you push on a half, he's going to mark it wrong. So, <laughs> um, so that was there. And then, um, also I, I did make it to uh, hug dogs tailgate. Uh, my dad and I went by there. Uh, he is a very gracious host. He and his wife, Dana. Uh, so Jason, if you're listening, uh, thank you so much. We had a blast and it was great to meet you in person. Super jealous, super jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make it down there. I'm gonna make it down there to the Tate Center at, at some point. Paul will fun. probably have an opportunity before any of us because the the big time sponsorship over here. Your, your son, your son actually went to the game. As I yeah, recall, right? I mean, I, I was uh, I had actually had our company tickets for this game and gave them away set, or Friday night, and uh, and then I don't know four hours before the game started, a, a buddy texted and invited my one of my sons to go. Of course, I, I couldn't help myself. I put them in one of my Samford hats. There you go. <laughs> into the game. And uh, luckily, he didn't get poked fun of. I asked the guy that took them. I said, did anybody mention anything to him? And I think everybody was pretty nice to the old, the poor old Samford fans. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Hey, I, I saw some Samford fans. That's yeah. good. That was cool. I feel yeah. like there's a lot of Samford folks. Like I've, I, You're not the only one that I've, I've heard of around here that has gone to Samford. Um, yeah. Like, Close, close, close friend of, of my wife's. Uh, their daughter goes to is plays softball at Sanford. So, yeah, it seems like it's a pretty desirable place to go to. Pretty chill, pretty chill location. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful area in Birmingham. But, but yeah, it's, uh, we'll we'll have some opportunities to go over there, John. If if we get extra tickets, or we'll we'll have to figure out a way to get you over there. We'll do. We're doing we some do. big recruiting. We're doing a big recruiting event for the Auburn game. Mm. Uh, so we got I think forty or fifty people going over. Um, so Jim, if you're around, maybe I'll have to sneak over and see it at the tailgate. Yeah, that's a good tailgate that Jim's talking about. We got a couple of them, get a couple of good spots for you, but, uh, you know, we can, we can work out a sponsorship deal here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you know, the BT solutions, not only of, of the Bulldog French. <laughs> Awesome. So, so Paul, Paul's going to regale us in some, some, some tales, right? But before we get into that, I see you, I see you, you're, you're, you're partaking in the bourbons as we do here on, on my God, a podcast. What are you, what are you drinking there, Paul? Yeah. Uh, I actually recently, my wife and I went to Chattanooga and, uh, did a whiskey tasting. So I don't normally drink just straight whiskey, but, uh, I had this, this Chattanooga whiskey 91 is what they call it. So I got some of that and that's what I'm okay. Here, um, nice stuff. Yeah, I like Chattanooga whiskey. They they make a good they make a good good whiskey. Yeah, the yeah, port the port the port finish that uh, John tweets sports uh, yeah. and I we, we really enjoy that one. Yeah, Jimmy, you, what about you? I I I I uh, got everything I needed yesterday, um, <laughs> so I'm having uh, some high quality H two O tonight. High quality. I've got the, I've got the, um, what is it? The American Spirit whiskey, the ASW, Atlanta, Georgia. This was a birthday present from my, my brother-in-law, the Fiddler Unison Bourbon. I have not had that. From nice. down the road, from down the road, Jim. It's pretty good. It's good. It's a solid. It's a solid sipper. So, as we were okay, as we often do. We start talking before we hit the record button. And John had a, should we be recording moment, which we often do. <laughs> um, and and I, I'm going to say, I'm going to repeat, Paul, I'm going to lead you into this with what you said. And I got to tell you, this really made me excited because I've always wanted someone to say this to us was that that you were yelling at the podcast, which I just, I love <laughs> because that is how I listen to podcasts. And so I'm so like, happy to know uh, that we now have had at least one person do that with us. So, so what was it that you were yelling at us about? Yeah, there was a couple things. Um, <laughs> it was Hold on, like, let me go to my notes. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me, I happened to have a notepad when I was listening to it. Amazing. Um, it was honestly, it was kind of fun to listen because Jim, you were, I think you were asking a couple of questions around the, you know, the, the history of the, of the rivalry and, and just some of the connections between Sanford and UGA. Mm -hmm. Um, the one, uh, I think you had asked a question around, um, Mark Ricks, uh, or, or I think it was Mark Ricks, uh, mentor. Mm -hmm. And yeah. John, I think you answered Bobby Bowden and I'm thinking they have a, I was screaming, there's a massive statue of Bobby Bowden on the campus uh, of Sanford right outside the stadium. 
Oh, amazing. Um, yeah. And, and when I was, when I was doing my work with, with UGA, uh, on the sports medicine team, that was when Mark Rick was there and okay. Mark Rick would always somehow interweave a, a Bowden story into his talks or, mm-hmm. you know, there's a few times that, that he and Catherine would hang out in the, in the training room and we would, you know, he'd have some kind of story and it was, there was always seemed to be some kind of woven theme of, of Mr. Bowden. Um, so I'm like, yes, it's Bobby Bowden. That's the connection. And <laughs> that was the, the other, the other was around the, uh, the one and O or the two and O the history of the rivalry. And, um, you know, and I was screaming, it's because they were Howard college. Yes. yes. Funny is later, <laughs> I think later in the podcast, uh, and I don't know, John, if you realized at the time, but you kind of answered the question and saying, yeah, oh. I didn't. Yeah. When I, when I, when I dropped that and you mentioned that, I was like, oh yeah, I'm an idiot. That's probably, I didn't put two and two together. <laughs> I didn't, I, I put it together afterwards. So I actually wrote a blog post on uh, dog central. Uh, so I have a blog on dog central. This is the time where we mentioned, Hey, you guys should, have, everyone should go and subscribe to dogcentral.com. Um, but I, so I did, I, I put that together later. So I, I had that, like, it was like Thursday night. I was like, wait a minute, Howard college. So I actually did a Google search for Howard college, Georgia bulldogs. And I actually found it. It was, so it was in the Samford pregame notes, which I don't think we had come out yet uh, when we recorded. Um, and it, it was right in there. It said it, it said, you know, while it, it basically laid it out, right. You know, played once against Samford, once against Howard college. So yeah, if eventually figured out, not while we were recording though. No. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. yeah. That's one of those moments. Like who do I call? Like, Oh wait, I'm, I'm listening to a recorder. <laughs> <laughs> we're a dialing show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, love it. And then the third was, I uh, kind of what I already mentioned about the, the connection between Ron Corson yeah. Um, there, that was a, that was a big one. That's a big one. That's a, that's, that's, that should not be overlooked. Yeah. And it, you know, if you, if you know, Ron, he has an extremely special place in his heart for, for Samford. Um, and of course I, I was, when I was at Sam or when I was at UGA doing my work, another buddy of mine, Ben, uh, Seagraves was there with me and he always used to kind of poke fun at me cause he, everybody thought that I was the, the favorite resident because mm-hmm. I was from Samford and Ron had a special place in his heart. For Samford. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I would say, what years were you? When, when, so you said it was in the Rick era, right around? Yeah, it was, it was uh, you guys will know this well, the Joe Cox final year. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. That was, that was the year, yeah. That was quite a, quite a rough year. That was, um, Stafford <laughs> was a rookie in Detroit. I actually got to got to hang out with Stafford one night. Um, he was back for rehab. That was the year. I think he hurt his knee, mm-hmm. uh, that rookie year. Um, okay. and, uh, got to know Joe. And unfortunately, when I say I, I got to know people, it was a, usually an unfortunate thing. Cause that means they were probably hurt uh, right. a lot that year. Aaron Murray was a, was a, uh, freshman. Um, yep. he was sort of the, I think some people knew of him, but you know, people obviously didn't know what he was capable of doing in the years after that. Uh, he and I got to know each other. It was when he was rehabbing his shoulder. Um, and and his brother, that was also when his brother was there, Josh Murray. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, that was uh, <laughs> interesting, fun dynamics to see the, the, the two of them engage. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was a great experience. I, I joke with people that that experience, you know, working with the Sanford football team, as we've talked about is maybe a slightly different level of football, Mm -hmm. Uh, and then going to, uh, to UGA and and working with those guys, I I joke that, um, in a lot of ways, it, it actually prepared me for the future, my future career and my future in parenting. I have five kids, Jim. (laughs) Uh, So you got, you guys have something, John's almost there. You you guys have that. You guys have a lot to talk about, uh, between the two of you. (laughs) <laughs> in that department exactly uh but i but i often I often make the joke that being a being an athletic trainer and being on the sports medicine team with with uga and these elite athletes was a lot like parenting that it, in one moment you're you're kind of frustrated that they're not doing some of the things that you want them to do you know with all the talents and all the potential and then the very next moment they're like making you this big proud you know, you're so proud of them. And, and <laughs> my wife was like, it's kind of like the dichotomy and the roller coaster of being a parent. <laughs> one, one moment you want to strangle them because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. And the next moment you want to hug them and you, you know, you're just so ec- ecstatic. 
for the accomplishments that they're getting uh, after working with them. So, um, yeah, I, I joke that I could probably write a book with some of the stuff that happened behind the scenes and things that, you know, you don't always, as a, as just a, a normal fan, you, you see, and you think, you think, you know, what's going on behind the scenes. And then when you get there, it's, it's quite an interesting party. Yeah. So I'm trying to think, so that would have been 2009. That was the Cox year. And I believe, uh, Aaron Murray and Zach Mettenberger, both redshirted that year, which again, sign of the times that you can sign two quarterbacks in the same class like that. I mean, that would never happen again. Yeah, uh, seriously. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure I get my, my timing right. Yeah. I remember, you know, there were a lot of, uh, Hey, why aren't we uh, switching? You know, there was a lot of Joe Cox hate, which I was always, you know, I was a bit of a Joe Cox defender actually. Um, you know, guy threw like five touchdown passes at Arkansas. I thought he was, I didn't feel like he was the problem, but anyways, we don't need to rehash that. (laughs) Well, you know, I, I, as I said, I could probably tell stories and stories. My two, my two probably favorite stories from that year. One was, uh, if you guys remember the, the bird flu was kind of going around during that era. And and I always Hmm. remember, this is one of those things where you, you, you kind of look at what's happening and then you realize there's things happening behind the scenes. I remember, uh, I'm sure they do something level of like this, but on Mondays we would have the injury report and, and we would talk through the injuries. And then there was a completely separate section of like, okay, how are we going to filter this through to the media? You know, how are we going to, in the medical world, we, they call that protected health information or PHI yep, um, or HIPAA compliant, things like that. Mm-hmm. But um, at the time I can say this cause it's, you know, 14 years later, but at the time, Joe actually had whatever, I think it was swine flu or bird flu at the time. Um, but we kind of had to keep it quiet from the media. And um, that was, if you guys remember that, the Oklahoma State game that year. Mm-hmm. And so um, me and my buddy that was there with me, Ben, were called in and we actually had to escort uh, um, Joe on the on President Adams' private plane, separate from the team. Um, in an effort to make sure that, that, you know, the rest of the team doesn't get the flu or whatever. And I can remember it was probably yeah. one of the most nerve wracking events um, of my career, even to this day, because we get on the plane, this small little private plane and Joe, the starting quarterback of, of Georgia gets on, pulls the tray out and gets his hand caught, his throwing hand, his oh hand gosh. caught in the tray and just acts like he's like writhing in pain. And of course, Ben and I look at each other thinking, this guy just broke his hand and we're losing our jobs and we're right. going to be all over, all over <laughs> media for allowing this to happen. You know, long story <laughs> short, he ended up being fine, but yeah, to your point, it was amazing. Cause Joe was one of these guys. And a lot of these kids are that he was uh, just a good old boy, you know, mm-hmm. look, looking forward to hunting and fishing after the game. And, uh, and you think to yourself, the, the magnitude that's on, the pressure that's on these 19, 20 year old kids when, Really, if you sit down with them, they're you know they're good old boys that want to be hunting and fishing, and uh, at least at least Joe was. Of course, not nowadays. Right. A lot of guys are, are looking forward to the NFL. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, yeah. I, I think uh, I think from uh, similar similar mold there. From Ryan Rankin, I mean, a number of those guys. <laughs> I can I can just imagine a young a young Paul <laughs> just sitting there watching Joe Cox writhing in pain, like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. I do remember that he was sick. I re- that at least did come out. I-, I don't know that we knew that it was. I don't remember. I don't yeah, remember that at all. I already forgot. I mean, was it bir- bird flu, swine flu? What was it? Yeah, I think it was the bird flu. It was yeah, 2009, so we could go back and look. But, yeah, I just remember we had to be somewhat kind of hush-hush about it. And, um, you know, there's – gosh, there's so many stories. There's a, a, many other stories even from that game. We Ron Corson is, was, is and I think – still is, but was really big on IVs. If, if, if mm-hmm. kids even sniff the idea of getting a cramp, he's very quick. He was one of the pioneers in this kind of concept of doing IVs for it. But, uh, you know, they, during halftime, we had like half the team on IVs and we were supposed to go out for kickoff. And one of the, one of the coaches popped his head in and said 10 minutes. Well, we thought that was 10 minutes until we go out. That was 10 minutes till kickoff. Oh no! So we look up at the monitor and we got half the team on IVs. And most of them are on the kickoff team. So it's like, a, <laughs> it's like a war zone running through there and, you know, <laughs> just yanking, just yeah. yanking needles out of people's arms. You can do this in a hospital. Luckily we're at, uh, we're at UGA. So. <laughs> All right. So now that we, now that I know it was this year, I have a question that I have to ask. Okay. So 
as and this is not a medical thing, by the way. So don't okay. uh, we're not going to invite any uh, violate anyone's HIPAA. Um, with <laughs> in two thousand nine, it's a there is a there is an infamous game that season uh, related to something that we tend to talk about on this podcast from time to time. We, we are members of hashtag uniform Twitter. I know, I know where you're going with this. So the, right. yeah, the black, the black helmet, red face mask, black pants, uh, yeah. cocktail party. Like, is that a kind of thing? Like, like had you caught wind of that? Is that something that you had known about before? Or are you as surprised as everybody else? So this is actually a story. I was just telling a buddy of mine about a, about a week ago or so. Um, that game in general had a couple stories to it for it, but I'll start with <laughs> uniform, as you can imagine. I, I love I love actual uniform inside sources. <laughs> oh, man. So the short answer is the medical staff, we did not know about it until okay. we all went out on the field and we were warming up and one of the uh, equipment guys came and grabbed us and said, hey, y'all come back into the locker room with us. And we were like, what is, what's going on? We thought something was wrong. We get in there and they're having us and all like all the assistant coaches, you know, all the guys that were not involved in the warmups, uh, the medical staff, the equipment guys go through and switch out the helmets and switch out all the, I think it was black, black helmets and black jerseys, right? Um, it was black and, helmets and black pants and black white pants. jerseys. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so we're, we're rummaging through there and we had to do it strategically in a way that that at the, uh, in Jacksonville at that, at that stadium, our locker room was, was constructed in a way that in the back half of the locker room, there was a huge shower and the team was going to go in there and do their like pregame ritual prayer and things like that. Mm-hmm. Well, so they had, they came in, uh, we were switching some things out, but we had to be super discreet about it. They went into the back. We switched all their helmets out, all their pants out. And they came back into the, uh, into the locker room. And I tell people, you'd have thought that they just won the national championship. I mean, they were going, they were going nuts and just yeah. crazy. And um, if I remember correctly, this was after the Auburn game, right? When they, it was two they years, it. yeah, it was two years later. And and we were all kind of like, I thought that uh, a few of us were kind of like, whose idea was this? This doesn't <laughs> seem like. And that was, you know, Tebow was with Florida, and we felt like. We didn't have a great shot of winning that game. Those of us that were realistic at mm-hmm. the time. Um, and so I, we thought, oh, well, maybe they're just trying to pull something out of a hat here or whatever. And, yeah. um, you know, as, as the story goes, they went out on the field and, you know, the crowd went crazy. And then we proceeded to get just railed uh, yeah. and it did not go well. But I remember in that game specifically, you mentioned something about not everybody being a, a Cox fan. Um, but Logan, you guys remember Logan Gray? Yeah, Logan Gray. Yeah. yeah. So they they the, up, the king of the the fair catch. He would throw him out there to return punts for some reason, and he would fair catch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they they put him in, and that and I don't remember if it was because the game was mm. so far gone, or if they were just trying to figure something out and try something new. But he got in there and he threw a pick, his first throw. Yeah. And um, I remember very distinctively on the bench, we turned around and two Georgia fans got into a fight. Uh, because they were yelling like one fan was yelling at coach and one fan was yelling at like Logan gray. And it was just a mess. I mean, people were, people were pretty upset across the board, but then (laughs) another Georgia fan is like trying to defend him. And so they get get into a visual fight. And I remember we're all looking behind us going, this is not good. You know, we're losing on the field and our fans are fighting each other in the stands. That I blame. About right. I blame. I blame the black pants. Yeah, it was. Remember, we were thinking. I bet we don't see any uh, any change in uniform for a while. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because that was after you know it, that was after the successful blackout against Auburn, right? Well, that was the first big one. But then there was it, it was actually the next year. It was '08, the year before you were there. '08 was the the unsuccessful blackout of Alabama. And so that mm-hmm. already put a bad taste. And then the black helmets against Florida was, yeah, that yeah. was a nightmare. So yeah. that, that's where the don't mess with the helmet crowd comes from. So there, yeah. the, the uniform, uh, the uniform police grew substantially b- between 2008 and 2009. <laughs> yeah. That was, it, it, I remember thinking we were all talking, it seemed like a bit of a stretch at the time, but yeah. Yeah. You know, for who, sure. who were we to say, you know, right. I knew things. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> go back there and do your go do that PT, yeah, PT go, stuff. Go, 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 tape, go tape the ankles and get the kids ready to play. 
<laughs> That's funny. Uh, what other? So you were only there for one year, Paul? Yeah. For some reason, I felt like it was a couple of years. It felt like a couple of years for me as well. It was a long season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was. Seriously. It was just one. One essentially kind of because I was a certified athletic trainer. I was able to do my residency for physical therapy school there. And Ron, you know, having the connection there, it was a one season thing. So, which was, you know, John, you know, this at, at the time it was a good thing. It was only one season because my wife was living in Atlanta and I was living in Athens. So that was a, it was a hard thing on a marriage for two or three years in there. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine Natalie not being appreciative of that one. No. Um, so, yeah. So we had, was that, when was David Wright? When was David David Wright, uh, the trainer up there, was he, was that the same time? Well, I mean, he was like a student trainer when we were in school, actually. Um, oh, but, I got my timing mixed up. Yeah, well, he was when we were in school, but I, but, I mean, he's he's done a lot of stuff. I mean, he listens, by the way. So, hey, David. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, David? Lee? Um, he and now, now, so right, David is now yelling at the podcast. <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> he's probably. Uh, what year was he there? Was he there when I was there? He, well, no. So he's our age. Well, I'm a little he's bit older than John, but so he graduated with me. So he was at Georgia, like 98 to 02 is when I was at Georgia. Okay. And so I know he was, a, I know he was a student trainer while we were there. Um, yeah. but then he was, I'm not sure that he was ever back directly with the school, but he's a, but For he's still, I thought he was, well, but... he's in Athens still. So, um, or the yeah. Athens area, I, I'm, I'm probably getting his like official city name wrong. Sorry, David, but I know. <laughs> I know he's in the general vicinity still, so yeah, he's probably got some good stories too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does. <laughs> so you, you had mentioned you had mentioned you had a, a doozy of a story that involved Kirby Smart, as I recall, right, Paul? Yeah, sort of. It, it's um, so the connection I have with Kirby uh, is sort of through a guy I went to uh, to grad school with. So Kirby's wife, Mary. Beth, I think is her name. Yep, Mary Beth. Yep. Mary yep. Beth's cousin is a good friend of mine from PT school. So there was some connection there and it, his name's Carrie West and uh, Kirby came to Carrie's wedding, which we were all at. So I briefly met him there. But when we were in, well, hold on. did you, did you leave him by himself? Like Jim did at another <laughs> soiree? <laughs> I feel, like there's a, I feel like there's a story there. There, there, is, there is. There is. We'll tell you that one when we hang up so our listeners don't have to listen to it again. Uh, but, but when I was in, yeah, the connection there was um, in Augusta when I was in school there, uh, Kirby called Kerry when he was with Alabama and said, hey, Saban's got to come to Augusta and, and, and visit a recruit. I think it was Washington, last name Washington, offensive lineman. Okay. Um, this was this would have been in, in 08, 7 or eight. Um, but he so Kerry called me and Kerry didn't have a great car at the time, and so he called me. Of course, I didn't have a great car either. If that tells you anything about how Kerry's car was, but uh, I had like an old <laughs> older, I had like an older uh, Lexus SUV, and so Kerry called and said, "Hey, I've got to go pick up Nick Saban at the airport." in Augusta, I need a nice car. Can I borrow your car? And I was like, my car is not that nice, but <laughs> sure. So we were going out of town the next day and I, I was cleaning the front seat and whatever. And there was, in the, there was a rip in the leather and I didn't realize it. And I'm freaking out driving all over Augusta, trying to find a cover. Um, <laughs> there's a, there's a whole lot more story to that, but I, long story short, I finally found a cover for it to, to put over the leather because there was a massive gaping hole in the leather where I'm thinking Nick Saban is going to sit and he's going to lose his mind if he has to sit in a, in a seat that has a rip in it. Um, <laughs> and so uh, come to find out when he went to pick them up their their offensive coordinator was the one that sat in the front and Saban actually sat in the back. So mm, uh, I went and visited and, um, and then I, I asked if I actually asked if I could like ride along with him and they said, no, of course, but uh, <laughs> I got, the only thing I got out of it was I think Saban gave us some game day Alabama shirts. So uh, it still sits in my closet. I don't think it's ever been worn, but it's my token Saban gift uh, for borrowing my car to go visit a, uh, of course, nowadays I joke that they don't need cars uh, from petty people like me. They use helicopters to, yeah, to, seriously. to ride around. Yeah. yeah so. the, the Kirby uh, copter is very, is very well known. Yes, I'm, so, I'm. I'm like just absolutely flabbergasted that they had some like random folks just pick up Nick Saban as opposed to just calling a limo service. Like well, that to so me, that just... was that was a point of discussion. But they didn't want media to catch hold of it, and they didn't want 
Like some, uh, they actually did uh, some guy that they didn't know. So, you know, it was Kirby's, uh, you know, distant relative uh, that they it. actually knew and they trusted. Right. So this is this is the 3D recruiting chess. We're getting it. We're getting windows into the 3D recruiting chess. I say this is part of hashtag the process right here. <laughs> <The> process. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's amazing okay i as we were talking i was frantically trying to pull back up the 2009 schedule you were definitely there for the a heck of a roller coaster of a year oh my gosh <laughs> uh let me just remind a couple i'm gonna rattle off a couple of other things that happened that year a we lost to kentucky uh and i remember like we we lost late like we we could have tied it up and we fumbled uh like like florida did this past weekend jim oh, florida, 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 florida. Nice, nice segue very good i can't believe we didn't mention that that was pretty awesome um yeah it was also the year where we lost to lsu off of there was like a crazy like horrible celebration penalty called on aj green uh or at least that's, that's right I remember that we, we had taken the or we had tied the game or and then like there was a crazy celebration call and then they I think came that down was the game right too that Bakari Rambo. You guys remember Bakari Rambo? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. He got somehow drilled in the head, or he maybe hit he hit somebody. Oh hit yeah, major head injury. Um, and I think we actually had the spine board on that game. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of things that happened. Were you on the field for that? Yeah, I was. Wow, we can go back and look at that one. I want to say that was Auburn. But I could be wrong. Oh yeah, I do think that that was Auburn. It was so yeah, it was it was a home game. I remember that it was, it was Auburn and LSU both home. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it was yeah. pretty like early in the game. I think I, I whatever that was a long time ago. But yeah, but I for sure I do remember that. Yeah, he was pretty young at that point. I think actually, I, like he may have been like he had to have been like a freshman, freshman or sophomore. Um, yeah. So we're on the we're on the field, and uh, yeah, because I distinctively remember, even though this, this was like 13 years ago, 14 years ago, uh, I was standing next to David Pollock, who had come onto the field just to kind of check it out, and and David proceeded mm-hmm. to tell me about his injury. If you guys remember mm-hmm. his injury in the NFL, yeah, and basically ended his career, right? Um, and so he was telling me all the details of that. And I'm thinking to myself, like, let's not put the cart before the horse here. Like, we don't, we don't, we don't know right. what actually happened to Bakari yet. Let's just, you know, it obviously was a bad head injury, head and neck injury. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty brutal. Man, yeah, but I mean, he obviously, you know, full recovery because he went on to to play in the NFL. Bakari mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. I, I I can't imagine like like how like I mean how quickly do you, are you guys able to assess like the severity there? Like, are, is it like instant you're running out there when you see something like that? Or? Yeah. You guys, we, I don't think we see this as much anymore in the game because of the, the targeting. But if you guys remember mm. when kids, uh, when guys would get hit, they would do what's called posturing and their arms would go uh, yep. up in the air or, or like they call it, they call it fencing posturing. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you go back and look at the film, we looked at it and Bakari had both arms posturing in the fencing. So he got hit his body went rigid and his, both his arms went in the air and you know, you know, right away what that means. You just yeah. don't, you just don't know if it's any, if the, if the spinal cord is, is damaged at all at that point. So you're kind of holding your breath, but you know, it's a pretty severe concussion head injury. Okay. Uh, but we don't see those much anymore in sports um, because of just the protection that they have on those, you know, those guys, was it uh, Massaqua that one year they got hit coming over the center? Um, center was, of the field where he just got laid out. You don't see those kind of hits anymore. Yeah, I know exactly where you're talking about. It was a different number one, and 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 but your guy Ron Corson, I know he would. It was Reggie Brown. Uh, it was in 2004. I was it was Reggie when Brown. It, happened, it was at Auburn, and I know Ron was the one that went around <laughs> the country showing that yeah. that was the hit that he used. I mean, he played a big role in the targeting rule being created, yeah. if I recall correctly. That's what I was going to tell you too at the beginning. If I left that out, is that Ron? Not only is he like a pioneer and and like the godfather of sports medicine, but in the head injury world, he's known as like the, you know, one of the main guys that has gone around. They call it the heads up program, but mm-hmm. he has people from all over the country come to Athens where he speaks, and then he goes all across the country. But he's been a huge proponent. He was one of the early guys in uh, in putting the sensors within helmets. Mm. Uh, in Athens to study the impacts over okay. time within these players. But uh, yeah, Ron's been a, a huge, huge mogul in that industry. 
So, so when, when those of us are, are getting upset and, and yelling at our TVs about targeting, uh, I, th- I, I think you, you would argue it's a, it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. The latest, yeah. the latest research on concussion, John, you mentioned this in the preview. Uh, that's, that's the other point. I wasn't quite yelling at the, but I was kind of talking, <laughs> I was talking to the podcast going, yeah, it's called CTE, yeah. you know, the concussion and, um, and all of the latest research points to some significant protection of kids these days, which is good. It's good for the long-term trajectory of our youth. Yeah, right. We, uh, I haven't, I haven't talked to Lindsay about this, so if she hears, but, um, I, it's actually gotten me thinking, you know, cause Carter plays goalkeeper. I've actually thought about putting him in that, in that headgear. Someone jokingly was asking me, is he going to have to wear that funny headgear? And I was like, well, you know, honestly, maybe, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, something to consider. They look, they look exactly like the the headgear that they wrap the players' helmets in for practice. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't seen that. So they'll do that for soccer for keepers yeah, now. Peter Peter Check, who plays for Chelsea, um, which if you can Google that, like he wears he wears this headgear because he had a pretty substantial concussion, similar to Carter's thing, where he got uh, he got clobbered, and so now from now on he wears a he wears a permanent permanent headgear. Interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't heard of that. But so so Paul so Paul was there with Mettenberger because it was uh, it was probably what uh, how when did you leave when did you leave UGA like what he was just there month? for the one year oh nine he was just here for the oh nine season so yeah they yeah. played in they played in Shreveport so December January yeah January so Mettenberger was there yeah he was a jokester I remember. I, he wasn't injured much, so I don't remember uh, hanging out with him too much. But, um, <laughs> but I funny. do remember him being a major prankster. But he transferred. Yeah, he he <laughs> transferred to LSU, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, he I was just about, I was just about to say so so Paul like about four or five months after you left. I, I'm not I'm not blaming you, but like four or five months after you left, uh, Zach got into some trouble that caused him to have to transfer to LSU. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to think that we kept him out of trouble. Uh, exactly. You know, you, I'm not blaming you, but yeah, right. Yeah, we, we credit Paul for that happening, not happening in 2009. <laughs> yeah, uh, awesome. Uh, that was I, a sad story because he was one of those guys. He was the heir apparent. Like he was, he was supposed to be the guy. Well, and his mom worked there. Like his mom yeah. was like yeah. worked in in Buttsmere. Yeah. So I, I just, think we ended up okay with Eric Murray, though. I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember getting to know, unfortunately for Aaron, I get, I got to know Aaron pretty well. Um, and he was just a unbelievable class act. You know, people talk about, Oh, I wonder if that guy is the same on camera as he is off camera. Hmm. Um, or the same, same off camera as he is on camera and just an outstanding guy, uh, great family background. I think I actually met his parents one time. Um, you know, he, when he was coming back from a shoulder and elbow injury, I had the chance to, to like throw with him a little bit. We would throw a Nerf ball in the workout facility first. And then we went out on the field and I remember telling him like, you know, okay, go easy on me. I know you could probably break my hand here. And I remember thinking he's just flicking the ball and I'm like acting like I'm dodging bullets. Um, (laughs) Just a a class act guy. AJ green was there um, and had, had a couple injuries. So I got to know him was just an unbelievable guy um, very humble. You know, all, what's interesting is all the guys that had, had the reasons, uh, had a lot of reasons to be cocky and kind of, uh, prideful were, were super humble guys. And then the guys that maybe didn't have as much reason to be the cocky ones were the more cocky ones. So <laughs> I always found that fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, that, that kind of gels with my recent experiences of being able to meet some, some, a bunch of Play, like former players and everything and, and everyone's been so nice so that that's always i don't know that always makes you feel good so yeah sorry john what were you saying i was just gonna i'm gonna interject on uh, a little bit of podcast connection slash what he's talking about so aaron murray and uh and drew butler who was also on mm-hmm. that 2009 roster i believe that he won the ray guy award in 2009 which mm-hmm. um i'm not sure if you had any interactions with him during that year but Aaron Murray and Drew Butler started a, a podcast together. Um, uh, oh gosh, I'm blanking on it. What, Punt and pass. Punt and pass. I guess you but, haven't been listening this season. 
John. But punt and pass, punt and pass is, uh, has not been, has not been the same without Aaron Murray in my opinion, but. Okay. I was going to say, yeah, uh, that's why, that's why I made that joke. Cause, uh, it's, it's Jake from, it's Jake from now. So it's sorry. Jake from, sorry, yeah. I digress. I was say, didn't Aaron get into the broadcast business? I mean, is he not in that anymore? He is. He actually changed that up a little bit. He he has a new different podcast though with uh, with T Bob A Bear is why he left that podcast. But yeah, and he's with like SEC Network in some yeah. capacity. This yeah, year. I actually ran into him. Um, I don't know a couple years ago because he spoke at one of the events that our our company was at, and I walked up to him afterwards and talked to him for a while, and uh, just you know, he he re- he remembered me, but also like you know thanked me for some of the stuff that we'd done. Just a great guy. A super wholesome guy. Awesome. Cool. Golly, that 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 roster was still like like so interesting to me because like there's so many guys that I would just sit here and be like, ooh, like <laughs> what was like what was what was Ben Jones like? like oh Rennie my Cur- god. Rennie, <laughs> Rennie Curran. Rennie Curran is is a big UGA media member now. Ben Jones, Ben Jones and Ren, Rennie Curran. I actually have a story about Rennie Curran, but Ben Jones was one of my favorite guys on the team. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's a personality was, right there. He was a former wrestler, and John, you know that I was a former wrestler. Yes, and he and I, uh, he and I hit it off uh, really well. But uh, I used to back then. I used to take high school sports medicine classes over to the facility at UGA and and let them tour. And then Ron was super gracious to talk to him. So I did that every year for a couple of years when Kirby. Uh, joined the Bulldogs, he uh, put a, a stop to that, understandably. Um, <laughs> I think he was concerned about maybe potential, the optics of maybe recruiting infractions since I was taking high schools, high schoolers mm. over there, even though they, none of them were really athletes. But I think he just, he's tightened the screws on the whole program. But yeah, um, I remember standing outside the training room one day and I was with a bunch of people and a couple of teachers that were huge Bulldog fans. And I remember thinking, uh, and, and we actually told them, hey, you can't take pictures. You're going to probably see a couple athletes in there, maybe a couple superstars. And you just kind of have to – you can't act starstruck. You can't ask for their autograph <laughs> or just or walking through their, their <laughs> treatment. And I didn't even know who was in there. Of course, lo and behold, we walked in and it was like every superstar on the team was in there. And uh, and Rennie Curran was one of the guys on the on the table. And one of the teachers pulls out a camera and starts taking pictures <laughs> and like this, you know, they, they just didn't hear it. Yeah, they were starstruck. Yeah. And I remember afterwards, we walked out of the facility and we're walking down like on the other side of Buttsmere. And um, Rennie Curran actually like went out of his way and came outside and, and signed some autographs and took more pictures. And because he heard us getting on to her <laughs> for taking yeah. pictures, so he felt bad about it. Oh, uh, that's crazy. Yeah. Dude, Rennie, Rennie seems like one of the most genuine dudes in uh, out there like I've, I've heard him talk so many times and he's just so polite yeah. he's just so even keeled like yeah he's Thanks, one Peyton. of the great uga ambassadors in my opinion yeah uh, i got to work a good bit with the i cannot think of his name right now you guys will know the place kicker who plays for minnesota now blair walsh blair walsh yeah yeah he was uh he had a couple injuries that year so i got to know him a little bit but he's he was a great guy and i assume he's still I mean, in all right uh, I don't know if he's still I'm there. Actually, or not, not sure if he is. Yeah, but he did. He was at one point. You're correct. He he was at one point the on the Vikings. But like among amongst him, like I mean, you just run down that Ross that entire roster, Jim. I don't know if you've got. I, I just pulled up the 20, 2009 um, <laughs> roster, and it's just like, oh my gosh, like what did we do? <laughs> yeah, it kind of makes you wonder how he went. Like what, eight, like eight and five or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe wasn't exactly the shining star quarterback at the time. But, um, but to, to in his defense, like like last year, you could say Stetson wasn't exactly the shining star. But like, you oh, had my, a defense that was full of NFL talent. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. my quick rant. Is again. Joe Cox was not the problem of that team. That that team gave up the defense. Was the, the defense couldn't stop anybody, yeah, and yeah. with a lot of talent, as you're seeing on the roster. I feel Oops. like I I, I kind of want to like uh, Paul. I feel like we need to do this again and have a <laughs> oral history of the 2009 football season. <laughs> was, was Martinez the DC there? I can't even yeah, remember. He was. Yeah. Oh was, my god. <laughs> I remember. I don't remember a whole lot of details, but I remember a lot of yelling. Uh, yeah, I, I just right. got triggered. I just got triggered. Yeah, 
<laughs> that, that was right near the end, actually. Also, too, that was, we would, had to have been near the end. Yeah. yeah, we made the switch to grant them that. They I can't um, it was ten or eleven, but and I, I dodged the bullet a little bit that year because the next year after I left, they moved the entire. Uh, it wasn't the locker room, but the entire sports medicine facility and all the workout facility into trailers, because that was before they built the uh, the new facility that, th- that they're in now. Mm-hmm. Um. Got so, it. and gosh, going back to tour the facility after, after they finished it versus yeah. what we were in before is unbelievable. Those facilities are, are amazing. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can I can only imagine. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I know, I know it has come a, a long way. The, uh, the, the financial backing has changed significantly. It, it was starting to change towards the end of Rick era. And now it's, completely different. (laughs) Well, and I think what I've heard and what I heard when it, when Kirby first got there was that that was one of the first things he did is he went to the the team and went to the the boosters and went to the AD and said, if you want to compete with Alabama, you're Mm -hmm. not going to do it with these facilities. And they restructured even the, even the locker rooms at the stadium when, Mm -hmm. when I was there in 2009 was awful. It was Mm -hmm. like a, a, just one big concrete room. Um, and now to go back, we toured with PT Solutions being a sponsor. We went to a corporate event last year uh, where they actually had Top Golf. They had we were hitting golf balls onto the field. At oh Saint yeah, yeah. Uh, But we got to so tour cool. the new facility, and we had dinner with Kirby, and uh, we got to kind of go behind the scenes. And those facilities are unbelievable. I mean, just night and day from what they were, you know, changing into their uniforms back in the day. Uh, but yeah, I I think Kirby brought a a sense of urgency around the facility upgrade. Well, it was, it actually was uh, Pruitt. Pruitt was the one that put it on blast. Yeah. He- at the tail, at the, I was at the, that was at the tail end of Rick. Uh, I, yeah. Pruitt made some very public uh, comments. So that, that, that's kind of around that time where I was saying where it started to change, but it, it is still, even it's even more different now yeah. since Kirby got there. He, he's yeah. pretty, uh, been pretty demanding on that. Yeah. So, which is good. Good for yeah. Georgia. We're seeing, we're here seeing, uh, we are reaping the benefits. <laughs> yeah, we are currently yeah. reaping the benefits. I'm well, going to put a, I'm going to put a screenshot in this, in the chat here, Jim, that will probably get you nice and triggered. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, it, guys, you guys continue. Well, I would say with, with reaping the benefits, one thing we didn't even, we didn't even mention is that the, the new polls did come out today and we have, we have surpassed Alabama. We are now uh, number one. So we're, both defending national champions and uh, and current uh, current number one team I in the got, country. I've, I've kind of got the sense that that's not a good thing, or maybe Kirby uh, wishes that that you guys stayed at the two to the two or three mark for the remainder of the year. <laughs> I would agree. That he, I would agree that he considers that to be red poison. <laughs> yeah, that's a good usage of words. Uh, I have a feeling that Saban is just uh, happy as can be with that situation because. Uh, He's going to look at. He's going to take an edge off of that and just ride that into the ground for the rest of the season. I'm sure. Yeah. So, John, you sent me. Are you just being frustrated with the amount of NFL players that were on the team? Where do you? What is this? The offensive line. Look at. Oh yeah, like, yeah. You look at the roster. Just just look at the roster, and it's like th- there's no offensive line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, there's, a, there's a there was a guy. I don't know if it's showing up on your screen. The Trenton Sturt event. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, poor he, guy. He so was, he he got hurt in 08, and it that was when he tore his ACL, like the, what in preseason or whatever. And then, so I'm assuming he was still rehabbing while you were there, right? He tore it again. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah he, he, he tore it a second guy, and then I think I had heard. I have to go back and read. I'm pretty sure he tore it a third time, mm, and his yeah. career was pretty much over after that. Yeah, I mean, he uh, was like, was, a, you know, he was like the prototypical like left tackle like you know he like was, he was supposed to be the anchor of the line he was a giant i mean he was yeah. humongous yeah yeah but just Crazy. Plagued, plagued with injuries i okay well i don't know paul i could like i said i, I do think we only need to have you back <laughs> <laughs> i could so jim so I, I, could, I could talk to you all day full transparency jim was like i feel like we're gonna want to talk to him forever so like i don't know how <laughs> i feel about editing two full episodes <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did make that comment. Uh, yeah. I it's it's actually it's it's interesting to talk to Jim, somebody like yourself that can remember 
like every little detail about everything. And uh, Paul, you've come to the right place. <laughs> yeah. And I, wish, I have, like, obviously, I have a, a whole slew of pictures from my time there, but I wish what my only regret is is not writing stuff down or somehow documenting more of stories. Cause I feel like every single game, like I talked about Oklahoma state had a, had a story behind it. The yeah. Auburn game had a story behind it. Every game. Um, I actually didn't that year. I didn't go, I didn't travel to Shreveport is the only game. One of the only games I didn't go to. Okay. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, it was, you know, you probably didn't realize you probably didn't realize in your defense, like you just didn't realize what you were walking into. Yeah, I mean, you and you you have to kind of get yourself in the mindset of not being starstruck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean Herschel Walker would would commonly come stand next to me on the sideline, and you know, I, I said, <laughs> I can't even, I can't even. <laughs> yeah, there's, there were so many like famous people, and you know, um, Vince Dooley would would regularly hang out with us in this in the training room, and Catherine Rick, and so you kind of have to just get your mindset in that like this is just a ho hum kind of thing. Uh, but <laughs> it's looking just how back, it is. Yeah, and looking back, I'm like, man, I should have just, I should have taken more pictures, and I should have got, a, you know, should have snuck in a couple autographs from, especially like AJ Green or somebody like that, or even I did rehab on Stafford just one time when he came back, mm-hmm. um, but we were trying very vigilantly not to be those like groupies while also yeah. taking care of the athletes. Right. Um, yeah. No, I, can, I, 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 I can I understand you. that. Yeah. You yeah. Got a job I, to do. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, so, and there's, I don't know, I still feel a bit of that sometimes, even with everyday things, right? So kind of you were talking, you were a bit relaying things just to be parenting earlier, right? Like I sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I had recorded some moment, yeah. you know, a certain moment or whatever. But then at the same time, I was like, well, but then I would have been recording it and I wouldn't have yeah. been I enjoying it. it. So I have yeah. a lot of, a lot of things like that, that, you know, not the same, but still similar there. I, I, right. I, I could relate to that. And so I've even, had, so even in your previous life, you're like, should we be recording? <laughs> <laughs> right yeah seriously that's awesome yeah so true so true yeah i i, I was I, I don't know i would say you know what you, you could at least you know you could kind of like write a memo, do a blog. yeah just start writing it down now you know as much as you could remember now to, to keep that there seriously. are a lot of there are a lot of things yeah. that are that are out there these days you've, got, um, you've gotten you've gotten like what like 30 memories. 40 minutes worth of, of talking in yeah. here and we haven't even scratched the surface hey, we, we've preserved some of it for you here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was gonna and I was gonna say like what I really probably need to do is have somebody like you guys like go through each game and that remember all the details and they're like oh yeah like I can't I mean even when you mentioned like a Ben Jones I'm like oh my gosh that brought back a slew of memories a whole <laughs> slew of memories yeah <laughs> like like hold on Paul do you remember when he like dug up the turf at yeah. Georgia Tech State <laughs> we had pictures of him like. You know, uh, I remember, yeah. I remember distinctively that year, it was like a week before the, I had kept it pretty quiet that I had grown up a Georgia Tech fan. <laughs> I was trying to not even mention that ball. I can't, I was can't going imagine why. I can't imagine <laughs> why. The week, and the week before, I think somehow it came up. I don't know if my buddy Ben, Ben Seagraves had, had mentioned something or we were all kind of pretty comfortable with each other and it got mentioned in passing and they all, of course, they just laid it on me. And uh, it was the week before the Tech game, and that was you guys. Remember <laughs> tech, we Georgia just hammered Tech that year, and um, I ironically, I had, when I was with the Sanford football team, Sanford actually played Georgia Tech, and I mm-hmm. remember thinking this feels weird to be on the wrong side, and then I had to do it again with Georgia, and then going back mm-hmm. into the locker room, and just the party that they were having, the celebration <laughs> was insane. Yeah. I mean, just the craziness. And then the governor comes in and presents the governor's trophy. Um, you know, some of the pictures that I have from that. Uh, well, and Georgia it, Tech was supposed to win that game. Oh, yeah. They were they were much highly, more highly ranked. And we, like, out of nowhere just ran all – that was the Caleb King. Caleb King. Uh, Caleb King and uh, was Sean Ely. State? Was that We Run Sean the State? That, that was the We Run the State game. Yeah. 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 You were there for the We Run the State game on the UGA yeah. sideline. Thanks a lot, Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I did what I could for the behind, behind enemy lines kind of thing. Right? Behind enemy. What did you? What was your dad think? What did your dad say to you after the game? Well, he 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 tried to view it through the lens of a professional uh, opportunity. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I love it. Yeah, because if, if you know, don't know, if you don't know, if 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 Rip Dog, if Rip Dog is is you know he's got, he's a big UGA alumni. Paul's dad is Georgia Tech alumni. That way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, he, he's a hardcore fan. Yeah, for sure. Um, had season tickets forever. So yeah, I re- and also my I married into a big Tennessee family, and um, <laughs> if you guys. If you guys, if you guys remember, um, that was the year that uh, that Tennessee beat Georgia, and uh, yeah. it it was. I mean, I don't remember this. I don't Sanford remember this at all. Is, Sanford Stadium is loud, but th- it doesn't compare to uh, being on the field in Tennessee, uh, especially when Tennessee is, you know, is is winning a game against a team that they probably. Well, I guess at the time it was maybe a a toss up. Um, yeah, but, we were struggling that year, but yeah, yeah. no, I totally agree. That's the loudest stadium I've ever been to personally. Oh yeah. Is, Old is school, there's, there's like what? 130,000 people. And in it's that very one? vertical. The upper, the upper deck is like straight up. And I think it keeps the sound. Yeah. That's my theory. So they try, try <laughs> walking back into my in-laws house where there's lots and lots of, uh, Tennessee fans while I'm wearing my, you know, <laughs> my, my Georgia, you know. <laughs> And you're like, I don't even like these guys. <laughs> it's just something for me. Don't don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And All right, before I before I forget, I, I I feel like my guy to podcast has to call dibs on this uh, 2009 retelling. Uh, <laughs> you said to go through game by game. Uh, yeah. That could be Dude, side game side by game 2009. Yeah, that, that that's a good idea for the the my guy to podcast stories in the off season ball. Exactly. Yeah, that's that would be some money. Because I can promise you, I can content. promise you, Jim's probably got red and black newspapers <laughs> from two thousand nine. <laughs> no, I had graduated. I do. I have like every he John make John John said that I'm a hoarder, which like what I I like to say that I'm a collector. I was gonna say you got you got a few things on those shows. <laughs> yeah, I got all kinds of stuff. In there. I, have, I have all the things. You know, new edition is the national championship Coke bottles. Uh, that's a new addition to the room. So nice. My my token, one of my token uh, takeaways, and I think I still have it somewhere, is the uh, the Capital One Bowl Watch, mm. uh, which you know you guys are probably asking yourself, well, they didn't go to the Capital One Bowl when I was, I was about to say, it. wasn't it the Independence yeah. Bowl? <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a gift because uh, one of the one of the bands that we were doing rehab broke, and the carabiner shattered my shattered my uh, my watch. So Ron mm. gave me one of the Capital One Bowl watches as a gift. Oh, that's uh, funny. Shattering. It was actually on Caleb King's uh, ankle when it shattered my watch. Oh, so, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll have to uh, – I haven't done that in a while. I'll have to go back and look. Uh, or is this what you sent, John, the screenshot of the, of the, um, of the roster? No, it was just the offensive line. But uh, yeah, it was one of the one of the links that I clicked on. I could probably find a more official. I say that that's just incomplete. Yeah, it's got to be incomplete. <laughs> but that was like notable players. There's, there's a guy named uh, Ely. Was Sean Ely? Was he? On yeah, that? was Sean yeah. Ely? Yeah, he was here that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, him and Caleb King were the ones that had all the rushing yards in that that Tech game. Do you remember uh, Brandon Smith? Yeah. Yeah, he was a uh, like punt returner, wasn't he, or kickoff returner? He was. He was Mister Electric. He was supposed to be our. Uh, he was supposed to be our version of Percy Harvin. Or, P- yeah. or Peter yeah. Ward back then. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was a speedster. And I have a personal. I have a personal. When we go through the 2009 season with you in the off season, Brandon Boykin was one of my personal favorite dogs of all time. Fay- Fayetteville, right? From Fayetteville, yeah. Yeah, he he uh, punched me on the sideline one time. <laughs> 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 I think you just got the cold open, Jim. <laughs> now, what? Yeah, it was an accident. Okay. Uh, there we go. He had, he had just, I have to remember, maybe we retell the story. I have to remember what game it was. We have to go back and look. He, had just, he just ran a, a he ran a kickoff back for a touchdown. Of course okay. he did, because that's what he did. Yeah. Then he came to the sideline and he was cramping. So I was like working on his leg or whatever, and he was so <laughs> jacked up because the fans were like still fired up. He stood up and did like the you know like get the fan whatever. And yeah, he like locked me up underneath my chin. Oh my and gosh. I was like, and I like grabbed him. And I was like, dude, you just punched me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, just really excited. 
Uh, that's awesome. I, 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 I don't know how we can end any better than that. <laughs> Seriously, like that's a good segue because that's the kind of stuff you're going to get when we, we do this dissection. I have a feeling it's going to be an epic conversation. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh uh, man, Paul, this has been, this has been incredible. And yeah, just like what, what John was saying, I, I, I did say that, but I, I'm so glad, I'm so glad you agreed to come on, uh, graciously share, uh, honestly, both. I mean, you shared some, some insight for Georgia Sanford. Uh, that was great too. Really appreciated that. And, uh, just to share your, John always likes to ask, you know, yours is tangential, but like, Whenever we have guests on, John always likes to ask, what is your Georgia story? And you've got an, an incredible one uh, for that year. So much, much appreciated. Yeah, yeah, happy to do it. It's been fun. And uh, yeah, you guys have churned up some old memories. I'm going to have to go back and look at some old pictures. <laughs> some, uh, uh, John, I'll shoot you over some, some, some pictures that I find here and tell yeah. some – Story. If, if you got any pictures that we can tie into some some social media posts, we'll we'll definitely tie them into this. To yeah, this uh, you know, I was joking with Jim. I was like, you know, what are we going to talk about with Sanford? Obviously, we killed him, but like, we got to have something else for the folks. So this was <laughs> this was fun. This was fun to go through. So we'll 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 eke out some content out of Sanford somehow, some way. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 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 Well, with, with mentioning social, I don't know, like Paul, I I do just want to give you a minute if if there's anything you want to plug. Um, or, or, or anything. I'll plug it yeah, for them. I'll it. plug yeah, it for them. Yeah. PT Solutions. They're, they're <laughs> a great, a great company. I mean, I, I, I jokingly say that, but like, I mean, Paul, Paul's been there for me personally. He's, he's, he's helped out our, our kids. We've been to PT Solutions over here in Marietta multiple times and they're taking good care of my son. So, um, you know, if you are, need some help, need some, need some rehab, uh, the PT Solutions crew is, is a good place to start. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. we got 80, about close to 80 locations in Georgia now. Uh, and you know, I'm, I assume you have listeners outside of Georgia too. So we've got locations about 450 across the country, uh, now. So PT solutions.com, you can find a, a location near you it should be easy to do. Awesome. Excellent. All right. Well, quick programming note. We will be back later this week. Uh, I think pretty much back on our regular schedule uh, to, to preview uh, next week's matchup with the Gamecocks. Uh, as the dogs can stay undefeated with the victory over Sanford. And like we briefly touched about, have climbed back up to the number one team in all the land. So, uh, but did just want to say once again, thanks, Paul, so much. Uh, we really enjoyed having you. Yeah. Enjoy it, guys. Thanks for having me. And you don't have to participate in this next part, but go dogs. Go dogs. <laughs> I, got, I got my Stanford Bulldogs I can pull for, right? There, there we go. go for it. Go for it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>